classic first-person stealth series Thief has had a reboot, with this new Thief being the fourth game since the 1998 original. Like other iconic character-driven franchises such as Tomb Raider with Lara Croft, we were excited to see how Garrett would be reimagined. You were a big fan of the Thief games, weren't you, Badger? How did you feel about his man corset? Fabulous. <laughs> Garrett is one of my all-time favourite video game characters, and I loved how tough those original games were too. You had to rely on the shadows and really figure out how to be as stealthy as possible through some very tough scenarios. But almost immediately this reboot wasn't what I expected. I had a feeling you might say that. I'm a newcomer to this franchise, and being a lover of stealth and climbing, as well as tough but brooding protagonists, this game is right up my alley. Whoever's there, show yourself. There's one thing this city's taught me. You can put a price on anything. After being away from his hometown, the city, for some time, Garrett returns to find it being ruled over by a tyrant called the Baron, who only caters to the needs of the rich. Meanwhile, the poor are overtaken with a plague known as the Gloom. We've been hauling corpses since dawn. We just want this day to be done. Did you hear this lazy gutter shite? Consider yourself lucky you're pulling that card and not in it! The city itself is so grand and beautiful, isn't oh, it? Man, those views and cityscapes. It's got this wonderful gothic Victorian inspiration to it. Dark, moody, and filled with the kind of architecture that's just pure playground to a nimble thief. The first-person perspective lends itself perfectly to the movement system they've devised for this game. Everything just feels really fluid and just a joy to navigate. We reviewed this on PC, but I should say that I played with the controller hooked up and that felt much better. Yeah, the keyboard controls felt a little awkward and took me ages to get used to. I love that sway he does when he runs, though. It's very subtle, but just perfect. But my favourite move is that swoop, where he can move from shadow to shadow. It's a great way to move through small patches of light. Yeah, it really gives you that Angel of the Night vibe, doesn't it? Stealth is always your number one objective. And as you enter buildings, alleyways, ruins and mansions, you'll find the environment littered with noisy dangers to avoid. Broken glass... The city will begin again, brother. Urns that shatter if you bump them. <laughs> noisy caged birds... Oh, shut up! Even traps. But they can all be easily detected with your thief vision or focus. This is where the game became really frustrating for me because it just loves to babysit you. You're led through the entire game with an objective marker on your screen. You've also got your magical thief focus vision, which lets you know where all of your danger zones are. It's not the thief that I remember. You know, it almost feels like this reimagining is trying to adhere to some particular play style or set of mechanics that maybe the devs think gamers want or need from modern games, as if they might get frustrated being left to their own devices too much. Yeah, I can see that, but Skyrim left me to my own devices <laughs> and that's a modern game and it didn't hurt the game at all. Sure, there are still a number of obstacles to overcome, noise, light, hidden objects to steal, but then you just handed the solution on a platter and that's pretty much the game and I was very disappointed. Yeah, I guess things like focus vision can feel like a bit of a cheat. But it's such a common device now, it's a mechanic included for efficiency. I mean, I think it's fair to say that some gamers would lose patience if half the game was about searching every little nook and cranny for one item. I understand that, but I just think it could have been balanced a little bit better. In fairness, you can play around with a custom difficulty setting to make it more challenging. And that's great, but you can't change it on the fly, so I didn't want to go back and start the whole game again if I wasn't happy. Yeah, I don't think I felt in any way threatened until a few hours in when I got to the brothel. The guards you encounter in the street are far too weak, and it's not until you run into other thief-like NPCs with swords that you have to start being really careful. There is combat in this game, but it's fairly basic strike and dodge stuff and designed to be avoided, which is fair enough. You're a thief, not a ninja. Yeah, Garrett isn't meant to be a fighter. He's here. I thought the game did get off to a pretty slow start. Yeah, the story is a little washy and unclear at first, and Garrett even gets a case of boring amnesia, which I hate. Where the hell have you been? I don't know. Yeah, me too. Not to mention his annoying inner monologue. Okay. Seems someone's expecting me. Something's not right. I'll make the clock tower clear my head. I feel like I can think and act faster than normal when I concentrate. You can turn that off, thankfully. The first two hours of the game pretty much felt like just looting. I know you're a thief, and that's what thieves do. Steal stuff. But this got pretty tedious. 
I also felt there were a lot of those moments where control was taken away from you to play out an animation when stealing. And it's not heaps, but it's just a little bit too much happening in this game. Really? No, I don't mind that at all. Especially in first person games. You know, I like to see my hands out there and doing stuff. I like seeing the hands too. I just think he does it too slowly. He's a master thief. Grab He's it and go. He's gotta be stealthy about it. He can't just be banging and crashing through cupboards and drawers. No, I really liked that detail. I thought it was really polished. I did find it interesting though that you're pretty much kitted out with all of your gadgets from within an hour of play. There's maybe one or two inconsequential items you pick up later, but there's no real drip feed of gear. Yeah, I almost felt overwhelmed with all the different arrows and items I had on me at the start, but without as many opportunities to use them as I would like. I used water arrows a lot. Yeah, me too. They're pretty much all I used, actually. I do like, though, that if you extinguish a sconce with a water arrow, that the guard will then light it again really quickly, so your window of opportunity for a takedown is quite small. I also only used a rope arrow once, and I think that was in the tutorial. I think the one time I tried to use a Someone fire arrow, I set around. myself on fire. <laughs> but I'm an idiot, so... <laughs> Great job. I think it's a nice touch though that they show you a little pie graph at the end of each chapter of your play style. And that's whether you played aggressively in plain sight or focus more on stealth takedowns or even ghosting through completely. I know I've been pretty negative on this game, Hex, but it does get better the further you play through. There are some interesting puzzles and a cool mansion you break into, which at least in some ways harkens back to the earlier games. You have a number of guards blocking the entrance to the building and you have to find a way in. And there's lots of perils like guard dogs and flickering light patches waiting to expose you. The whole game should have been like that. Yeah, I like that chapter a lot. In fact, I played through it a few times just because I thought I could do it a little bit better. There's a number of diversions you can create to draw guards away from the entrance. But then on another attempt, I also found other sneaky ways to get in there. So it's nice that they thought about giving you lots of options. I like that it took a survival horror turn halfway through, which is another nod to the originals. Bard, were they trying to keep something out or in? Oh man, is there anything more terrifying than an insane asylum? After a relatively cruisy start to the game, I was not expecting this. And I know it's been done before, but anytime you see mannequins and then this happens, Super creepy. And even though this section had nothing to do with thieving, except I did steal some gold syringes, it was the first point where the plot really started to grab me. So what do you think of this reboot overall, Hex? Well, I mean, that's just it. For me, this isn't a reboot. I've never played a thief game before, so I was coming to this fresh. It was slow to start, but, you know, after things got going and the story picked up, I did warm to it quite a bit. I think the city and the world that had been created around Garrett is what saved the experience <sighs> for me. It just wasn't anything new or surprising, which is a shame. The bottom line for me is it didn't capture that magic of the original Thief games. I never found the stakes were high enough. The world feels a bit boxy, and I just miss that freedom of total exploration. Halt where you are! So, I'm giving it 6 out of 10 rubber chickens. It's 7 for me.